These days every company is boasting about its beautiful design system and how it improves their apps. It's become more and more important that applications not only perform good, but also look attractive. A core part of that philosophy is having different types of animations in your app. Through animations you can transform the data of your UI elements and let the user know things have changed. You can transition from one screen to another or between states on the same screen. Either way you use movement and changes in the user interface to convey more information. But you shouldn't overuse animations. Even though you can animate absolutely everything in your apps, you need to think your animations through. Animations shouldn't be there just to make the app a bit nicer, they should convey just-in-time information to the user to reduce confusion and produce intuitive state changes. This concept is called meaningful motion. In other words, your animations should have meaning. When it comes to Android, there are many different types of animations you can run. One of the simplest ways to animate your UI is to use value and object animators. They are special mechanisms that animate between two or more values and let you listen to the progress. Then using the current animated value you can apply changes to your elements such as their size or alpha. If however you want to animate the transition between different screens in your app, you use activity, fragment and shared element transitions. Activity and fragment transitions are used to move from one screen to another. Most common examples are fade in or out transitions and slide transitions. Shared element transitions are a bit different, as they let you move elements from one screen to another. This is why they are called shared element transitions. You can also animate lists and scrolling gestures to resize items, remove them and add them to lists, reorder the data and much more. Using scrolling gestures you can react to specific scrolling directions and distances and show and hide other controls you have on the screen. Pretty neat! You can also use physics in Android to enable spring and fling animations, add friction and other types of resistance to your UI elements. This is very fun if you're developing small video games or you need to build specific use cases where the user needs to move elements across the screen. There are many more small types of animations you can build in Android natively, but there are also many third-party libraries that let you add cool types of animations to your apps. One of them is Lottie, an awesome tool that lets you build animations in Adobe After Effects and different types of third-party software, and export them to JSON files. You then load those files in Android apps to achieve beautiful and lightweight animations without a lot of code. There are many more types of animations, but you'll slowly go through them in the course. Let's start off by exploring the project and using value and object animators.